Blog Talk Radio. Fuck is up, y'all. Scotty Two Balls up on here on Carnival Spirits Radio. Today we have a very special guest. Jigsaw, you are on the line. What up, How you doing, man? Oh, I'm good, I'm good. What about y'all? I'm doing pretty good. Thank you so much for taking time out of your day to do this interview. It's great to have you on here. Uh, give more people a little chance to get into some of your background and just to get you out there more because you dope music you put out people need to hear more shit <laughs> right there's a lot of underground music that people just don't know about why don't you give listeners a little brief history of jigsaw like how you came about well, all right this is how it started out you know i was um actually i went to school with um Eshan, um m proof uh uh-huh. You know, all them cats, all the East Zach cats. And, um, you know, we was in high school and high. And, you, you know, I was a beatbox. You know, I used to beatbox and all that stuff. So I used to beat on the table, beatbox or whatever, while they float or whatever. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, that, that's that Detroit sound right there. That's that's where it started, that, that underground music. You know, it started here with, with Eshawn, with the Wicked. And, you know, it branched off to, you know, we had a couple of gangster people who got signed, you know, and this and that. So, you know, my whole feel was it to keep it Detroit. So, you know, I started doing the underground music, hooked up with um, King Gordy. Mm -hmm. King Gordy gave me the pass, and it was on from there. Love King Gordy. (laughs) Been following (laughs) him for a minute. And uh, thank goodness, because actually King Gordy is what brought me to hearing your shit. So uh, much love to Gordy for that. (laughs) Oh, yeah, oh, Um, yeah. So when did you start rapping? Um, what's this, 2013, uh, I started like 95, 95, started like with a couple of crews, I was in a couple of groups, I was in a couple, actually I was in a group called the Murderous mm-hmm. Clip, and mm-hmm. Real Life, which was Eshawn record label at the time, right. was, was into the group, but they really wanted to sign me, and me being mm-hmm. loyal, I just stayed with the group. You know, and that passed me up, you know, whatever. Right. Um, then, like, I took it serious maybe 2005. That's when I said, you know what, it's time. And I just went hard. I just started putting out CDs after CDs. It was a lot of, it was a lot of street music at first, you know, because mm-hmm. being from the city of Detroit, you know, that's all you know. Right. But then, you know, I was working on a new CD called King of the Birds, and I wanted to touch on every music, you know, from underground to the wicked to gangsters or whatever, and that's when I hooked up with Gordy, and, you know, basically from there, once I went underground, I ain't even come back above ground yet. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> I noticed that they just put up the Mr. Jigsaw 313.com website, and I thought yeah. I might give people a little uh, background. I'll just read this off real quick. In the last year, Jigsaw has done... Shows with Rick Ross, King Gordy, Busy Bones, Mo Thugs, D12, Royce to 5'9", Critical Bill, Afro Man, Ritz, Lil White, Hard Target, and more. You've been on a yeah, promo yeah. tour through the Midwest, and your hard work and grind is still paying off by winning 12 awards. That yeah, is yeah. fresh. Artist of the Year of 2009, 2010, 2011. Best Life Performer 2010, 2011. Best Album of 2010. Does it crazy? Just goes on and on and on. The website is Mr. Jigsaw 313.com. There are links to go get his albums. There's links to the YouTube, to the iTunes, to the Google Play, to his Facebook, Twitter, Reverb Nation. I know you got a bunch of tracks up there for free download. Yeah. Um, yep. Just all kinds of shit. All right. Well, what are some of your musical influences? Like, who really influenced you? What kind of music do you really listen to? Well, yeah, you know, I listen to everything. When I say everything, I mean everything from country right. rap to rap. So I listen mm-hmm. to everything, but, like, anybody who's been big and legendary are the ones I look up to because longevity is what keeps you relevant and keeps you in the game. Like, I have to give it up to um, Insane Clown Posse. They right. they just been holding the underground down for like forever, right? You know, and that, I gotta give it up to them because that's longevity. You know, a lot of people come and go. Even like when I started, I seen a lot of people I thought were who were hot and out there, and now I don't even see them no more. They're not even doing it no more. So 
that longevity, anybody from Q to the Ghetto Boys to to Tech Nine to to M, um, shit, any and everybody, Rolling Stones, I like them. I, you know what I'm saying? I like Nick Jagger. I like all of them. You know what I'm saying? Because right, right. music is music. Mhm. You can't call yourself a musician you. if you can't, oh, you yeah. know, don't, don't like all the music. You gotta appreciate all different kinds of music. So what yep, uh, yep. what are your future plans right now? Do you have any what you have an upcoming release coming up? Yeah. Um I dropped Saw the thirteenth on Halloween uh, right. last year. Mm-hmm. And so right now I'm working on the new C D called Game of Thrones. Just released the first single off that called Lil Billy. Bully song. Lil Billy? Anti bully and type joint. About to shoot the video in a couple of days actually here in Detroit. Got the okay. cast going and everything, so I'm dropping the album. And plus, you know, we got these, this mini movie coming out called Game Face Business, you know, so to give you a feel of my directing debut and stuff, I wrote the movie, directed it, and all that, so. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. Is it going to be like what Lynch is doing with his Man of Lecter? Are you doing like a trilogy mini movie, or is it just like for one video for a song? I probably do a mini movie type thing. That's what I'm looking for right now. I got a um, nice little film crew that's helping me out. Mm-hmm. So, you know, we got, we thought around a lot of ideas right now. So it's definitely going to be a lot of visual in 2013 at Jigsaw. And, you know, I'm pushing music um, all the time. Actually, I'm on my way to the studio now to record this song called um, Juggalettes, you know. And um, mm-hmm. it's for all the Juggalettes. I got a lot of Juggalettes that sent me their names. And the cities they from that I'm gonna mention in there. I got um the one who's the the cover girl for it is my girl Spooky Lat. You know, so oh, she's the like first, the yeah. cover. Yeah, she's like the cover girl for the song and shit. Well, that sounds like something really interesting. We'll be looking forward to that. I just uh, watched the Jigsaw's Carnival video. I was, that was really good put together, and I thought that was pretty fresh. <laughs> thanks, bro. Thanks, thanks. Um. Let's see, how do, how are, do your new tracks differ from your earlier songs? Well, the earlier songs was more, how can I put it, more wicked, more on the blood, gory side. I'm going to have those tracks, but actually the whole concept behind it is I'm coming for the throne. I'm I'm about to be the new face of horrorcore. That's my thing. You know, that's my, my whole gimmick. That's my whole um, run right there. You know, new face of horrorcore. So, see this game of thrones, and I'm coming for the throne. I'm, I'm, I want to be at the top, you know. So I'm gonna give them a variety of all kind of music. I'm gonna touch on a lot of stuff that I didn't touch on on the first CD. A couple of nice songs coming out. You know, I got a song called. Um, actually, I got a song called Gordy. The concept of that song is where if everybody know Gordy, they know he's the weed king. And um, so I got a song where Gordy overdose on uh, marijuana. Um, <laughs> I steal the body, you know, cremate him, uh-huh. put him in the weed. You know, it's like how high. But when I smoke him, I become all these other hardcore rappers because, you know, this is in Gordy. So, you know. <laughs> That's a good concept right there. That's cool. All right, let's see. What is your ultimate goal at the end of your career? Where do you want to be, like, in, I don't know, say five, ten years? Well, like I said, you want to keep it be... underground? You want to rise up? Um. Definitely, yeah, I'll keep it underground. It will always be underground. Whatever rises up, that's because the media and, you know, the public have maybe grabbed it up and snatched it and bring it mainstream, basically. I would never just say, I'm going to release this mainstream first. You know, I release everything underground first. If it hit mainstream, that's cool. But my long-term goal is just to be relevant in the music business, period. You know, I ain't got to be the front man. I ain't got to have all the CDs and, you know, be the man. You know, I like helping other artists. You know, I like sharing things with, like, a lot of local artists here in Detroit. I share a lot of my wisdom with them, you know, about the business and how you can get paid. You know, I know a lot of the the behind-the-scenes things. So that will be my thing. You know, I will always be a part of music. Right. Be a mentor. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. You know, that's the ones that's coming up. Mm Mm-hmm. So I noticed you got this picture on your website where it looks like you're – were you on Psychopathic Radio recently when they were still doing yeah. their shows? I think it was like in November. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it was November. I did the interview. That was real cool. Then uh, um, actually the next day, 
me and Gordy went to Cleveland, and he had a show out there. And it was cool to see some of the dudes from Psychopathic Records who was at the uh, uh, radio station that night there. You know, mm-hmm. and we had a good time. And it, it's just like that whole feel of the radio station and everything is, like, real big. And I was really impressed with their setup. You know, that was, like, the best one I've been to. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so I was really impressed with their setup and everything. A couple of DJs here in Detroit had hooked it up for me. And plus my management sat down with them and chopped it up. And they said, well, shit, let's get them in. We called them, like, a Monday. They had us come in that Thursday. That's awesome. So you're going to be going to this, uh, the Juggalo Day and Sing Clown Posse uh, Riddle Box live show? Um, anything that they throw, I basically go to, be at, you know, I love the, the fans, the Juggalos and the Juggalettes. We all love the fans because really they are the ones that have to drive. They're the ones that get you pumped. Without them, you know, oh, yeah. it just be like, oh, why am I doing this? But yeah, they, they really get into the music and that's what I like about them. So I'm always yeah. there passing out freebies. Um, mm-hmm. You know, kicking it with everybody. There's just a whole different feeling being around Juggalos at like a some kind of psychopathic show or something than being at some other concert. You know, like yeah. being at like it's just a completely different vibe, and there's just a sense of camaraderie. I guess <laughs> <laughs> right. completely different. People look out for one another for the most part, and you know, right? They always come I, out to have a good time. Mm-hmm. That's what it's about. That's what it's about. No gang shit. <laughs> right, yeah. <laughs> All right, let's see. Um, do you have any shows coming up? Are you going out on tour, or are you just you trying to work on this album? Um, well, I'm, re- I'm re- working on the album, but also I have a show actually this Friday with um, Chop Shop, Venomous, and a couple of other local cats from Detroit that do the horrorcore mm-hmm. music. That's this Friday, actually, at Club Diesel in Chesterfield, Michigan. The label I'm fucking with, Unstable, they actually put together a promo tour for that CD release right now. Actually, I think that kicks off the end of March into April, and it's me and King Gordy. Cool. Yes, we're going to bring some nice things to everybody, you know, bring the Jigsaw Carnival live to you. Awesome. Have you played The Gathering yet? Have Not yet. Have you been able yet. to play the stage? Any plans Not on yet. doing that in the near future? Oh, yeah. Actually, I plan on doing it this year. This year? That's cool. Yeah, that's my goal. That's my goal, because I got a lot of um, people. I know this gathering last year had a whole bunch of, hmm, how can I say, local acts from different cities. But it was a lot from Detroit City, finally, because this is where it started. And I see that ICP and... The whole crew over there, they start to pay attention. And they know it's relevant. You have all those three or four days, and you have big stars that played it year, years constantly in a row. They're not going to show up no more. They didn't got the feel of it. They, they don't care. You know, they, right. you know, they send them in the positive. They just keep them in going about their business. They, you know, come up with any kind of excuse why they wasn't there. So the, right. the new cats are so eager to do it, the fans are going to love it because we have a lot to bring. I just feel like this. I know... How the gathering works. I know you started off on the small stages, the little underground stages, and all that shit, and work to the big stage. I guarantee this. This is why I'm a very competitive person. I'm going to bring a show that's so fucking amazing to the gathering on the little stage that they're going to have to move me to the big stage the same day and tell me to do it again. Because that's how awesome <laughs> that's the show is going to be. Yeah, that's so that's, that's the plan yeah. right there. I can't fit on this little stage. <laughs> right. <laughs> oh, yeah. Get, get me off this stage. I can't do my shit. <laughs> yeah, so they're going to be like, oh, man, you know, the crowd keeps acting for him. We got to move him to the big stage. <laughs> so you are with Unstable right now? Yes, right now I'm with Unstable. We got a nice little um, hookup going. You know, I've been messing with them. Actually, I've messed with them. I knew them for about three or four years, actually. Wow. And recently, you know, they reached out to me. They threw a show out here in, in uh, Warren, Michigan, and me and Gordy rocked out on it. And after that, they was trying to get me to come over to the label. So mm-hmm. um, I finally decided to, you know, see what they was doing. You know, I like the work over there. I like what they're doing. They, they're definitely good with the booking the tours and, and making sure you on point with a lot of stuff. Me, I'm one of those ones that don't sit around and wait mm-hmm. for no one. And that's right. just me. You know, even if I was on Def Jam, it wouldn't matter. I would right. still do me. 
because that's just me. Because what I put into it, they put into it, that just make it, you know, double the pleasure and shit. Right. Yeah. Whatever you put into it is what you're going to get out of it. You can't wait around cool. for nobody to do it for you. But right, yeah, right. That's, that's cool. Yeah, Unstable has been really cool, uh, and they're really good people over there. So let's see them. How many albums do you have out right now? On iTunes, I have three albums out. Um, probably one single, I think, up there. And um, mm -hmm. a lot of stuff I have is on Reverb. Is that like most of the music that I put out that I want people to hear like right away? So I want people to hear this, yeah. I yeah. Know. So right now, what I'm pushing is the um, track, Little Billy. You know, that's what I'm pushing right now. Mm -hmm. It's uh, www.reverbnation.com slash Mr. Jigsaw. And you, there's quite a few tracks down there for free download. And yep. that includes Lil Billy. Yep. Is on yep. there. So make sure you go out there and grab those tracks. Very, very cool shit there. Um, and that's off the Saw the 13th album. And those are available on iTunes right now. Uh, actually, right before I started talking to you, I posted up on our Facebook page the video for Jigsaw's Carnival. So um, Okay, okay, cool, cool. Yeah, I wanted yeah. to see what the feedback was. Otherwise, I could have some people call in. Right, oh, yeah, it's all good. They, they can't have any questions. They can just hit me up um, right. on any of those links. Contact information is available on the website. And this thing, we got about one minute left. Is there anything else you would like to say to the people listening out there? Any plugs, shout-outs, or anything? Oh, yeah, I want to shout-out everybody who support Jigsaw. Looking for Jigsaw to come to a city near you real soon. And remember, the Game of Thrones, it drops this spring. So make sure y'all hear about it. Y'all will see about it. Um, hit me up on Facebook, Mr. Jigsaw, New Face of Horrorcore. And um, y'all just pay attention and, and, and keep them binoculars on me because I'm about to go live. Hell yeah, man. Well, I appreciate it so much. Thank you for being on the air with us. And we will get everything posted up and links everywhere as much as we can. So... Just good luck with everything you're doing. Can't wait to hear the new shit and the new video. Good luck with all that, man, and you fucking take care out there in Detroit. Oh, yeah, for sure, and thanks for having me on and for, for um, just showing me the love like you do. When I oh, yeah. um, drop all of my new exclusives, I'll make sure you get it first so you can drop it. All right, man, thanks a lot. Appreciate it. For sure, Bye, bro.